Track wrestling here on the eve of the Pac-12 championships with Arizona State heavyweight Tanner Hall. Tanner, I think uh, your story is one of the most fascinating in, in college wrestling. Uh, 25 years old, you spent a couple years on a religious mission to Uganda. Mm -hmm. Let's start with that. Uh, what was that experience like? What kind of things were you doing on a daily, weekly basis? And, and what did you get out of that experience? Well... A mission is something that's really different, I would say, from any other experience that really you'll ever go through anywhere. You're solely and completely dedicated for those two years to helping other people any way you can. So for somebody maybe who hasn't been on a mission, when you're on your mission, you wake up at 6.30 every single day, and you go to bed at around 9, 10 o'clock at night, 10.30. And um, from 6.30 to 10.30, you're just out helping other people, um, doing everything that you can to better other people's lives. And so that consists of a lot of, depending on where you're at, walking from place to place, um, just interacting with a lot of different people. You, you see a lot of things that most people would never see. We always kind of joked around when we would see tourists there because we're like, yeah, you guys are here, you're going to go back and you say, oh, I've seen Uganda, I've seen Africa, I know what it's like, and they really have no idea just because they're there, they kind of see the superficial amount where us as missionaries, when we would go in, we would interact with people, we would see their daily struggles, we would see what their life was actually like, and we lived very similar to it. And so it was just a unique experience, and some of the things that I took from it were just a lot of discipline and a lot of appreciation for what we have here. There's lots of little things like drinking fountains and paved roads and stoplights that we just don't even realize are such a blessing here that we have. How much is your mind thinking about wrestling during those two years over there and, and what kind of things were you, you, you may be able to do from a physical standpoint to keep yourself in a little bit of shape at least? I mean, probably not <laughs> tip-top shape over there. but uh, not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you, you, you have about 30 minutes every day um, to exercise. And so for me that just consisted of pull-ups, push-ups, sit-ups. Um, I brought a Bulgarian bag with me, exercised with that. Towards the end of my mission, um, when I knew I'd be coming back in wrestling, I tried to wake up early in the particular era, area I was in. If we took a taxi about 20 minutes, there was a little makeshift gym that was made out of car tires and stuff. and we or Not car tires, but car gears and stuff like that. And so we'd go and we'd wake up at like 4.30 and we'd go and we'd lift and we'd come back. Um, it's, it's interesting just, just kind of, some of the things that you think you wouldn't miss you do. So, you get done wrestling and you're like, man, I miss wrestling, I wish I could do it, you know, I wish I could go back, and then all of a sudden you start th thinking things like, man, I miss those 6.30 a.m. conditioning workouts, I miss running the incline in Colorado Springs, <laughs> things that you would never even dream that you would miss sitting in this chair now going, oh man, if coach said... Or doing the incline, to be like, woo, yay, you know. But those are the kind of things you miss, and it's kind of interesting how that works. How did you come out of that a different person than you were going in? Um, well, like I said, you definitely come out a more disciplined person. Um, you definitely come out also, like I said, somebody who appreciates more. Uh, something that else that I kind of took from it was just that I came out maybe more driven towards the goals I had, you know, it kind of cemented into me what I really wanted to do. I think as a, somebody who's 18, 19 years old going out, you know, most kids have no idea what they're doing. They're stepping out into the world of college and they're away from their parents for the first time. They kind of think they know, but they don't know. And so being on that mission, it just kind of cemented what my life goals were and what I really wanted to accomplish. You're an electrical engineering major. Mm -hmm. What do you want to do with your degree? There are so many things you can do with an electrical engineering degree. Um, at ASU, when you hit your junior year, you have to kind of specialize in something. So there's lots of different areas. You can go into power, you can go into something called signals and systems, you can go into microelectronics, you can go into all these different things, mixed signals. And so I'm kind of headed on the mixed signals route, which deals more with basically like memory or computer chips and how they're laid out and how they you can get them to function and do all the stuff you need them to do. So with that... You know, there's large companies like Intel. My dad works for an electrical engineering company called Micron. That's another big one. You can work for Google, Apple. All those are kind of on the board for possible places that I could work. What set you on this path? Your dad? Uh, yeah, my dad's actually, actually an electrical engineer. My mom's a calculus teacher for high school. And so just 
I was very science and math oriented as a kid, and I really, really enjoyed it. I didn't, like I said, I didn't necessarily have like a drive, like, oh, I want to be an electrical engineer, but I looked at my dad and said, you know what, he enjoys it. Let me dabble in it, see what I think of it, and, you know, the more I learned to it, the more I really enjoy it, just kind of seeing how computers work and all the little stuff that goes in behind it. We had a chance to visit with you for our seven minutes interview, and one of the things that uh, you talked about then that, that was most interesting about you that people might not know, or, or the most interesting thing about you that has nothing to do with wrestling, you talked about scuba diving all over the world. I enjoyed it, yeah. Where all have you gone, and uh, what's the most interesting stuff that you've seen down beneath the surface? Oh, wow. Um, so, I lived in Singapore when I was in third grade. And that was with my dad's job. We, we moved over there for a year. And just being over there, you know, a flight to China, a flight to Thailand, a flight to New Zealand, you know, it was only a, a couple hundred bucks versus a couple thousand bucks living here. And so we took advantage of that and we got to travel a lot. And I didn't get to do a, t a lot of scuba diving then because I was so young, but I did go to snorkeling. So we saw lots of cool stuff there. You know, you see sea snakes, you see turtles, you see jellyfish, you see, and I'm talking like jellyfish that are like this big, not just like little things you see like in aquariums. Um, when we went to the Junior World Championships in 2012, um, I delayed my flight for a week and we went there, and one of the coolest things we did was we scuba dived on a sunken ship. And so that's kind of cool to, it's kind of cool and it's kind of creepy at the same time to go underwater and see this ship that was sunken intentionally, or sometimes they're not sunken intentionally, they're actual accidents, and just to kind of see, you know, all the life that's grown on there, and it's, so it's kind of this creepy cool factor you got going on that it, it's really interesting. Zeke said you were trying to get out in Cuba yeah. during your trip there. Were you able to? Yeah, we, we went to the beach one day and uh, I, I've always kind of like wildlife and, and bugs and all that stuff since I was a kid and so actually at one point when we were out there I uh, we swam out pretty far and um, in Cuba you have the, the sea floor and then there's a, these little crevices and that's where all the fish like to hide is in those crevices because they're protected and so one time I dove down there because um, I, I brought a snorkel and some flippers and I was actually able to catch a puffer fish because they're pretty slow. And so, of course, the second you grab it, he gets a little agitated and he puffs up real big and he's real sharp and spiky. And so I brought him up to the surface and we have a bunch of pictures of us like oh, each holding him like this. You can't actually hold him because he, he poke you pretty good. So you have to like hold around him. And he, we have a couple pictures of it. It's pretty cool. You come from Idaho. Mm -hmm. And the big news in Idaho a year ago was uh, uh, Boise State mm -hmm. dropping the program. What has that done to wrestling in Idaho from your vantage point? Well, I had a brother who wrestled at Boise State during the current time, or during that period of time, so of course that affected my family directly. Um, you know, it was really sad because growing up 10, 15 minutes from Boise State, I was in their room. I was in the room during their heyday when they were ranked second in the nation. You know, everybody thought they had a shot at a national title. You know, you had Adam Hall, Kirk Smith, Hawk Strasser, all, that, all those guys. And so I remember going in there and drilling with those guys before Fargo and just looking up to them and saying, you know, this is what college is like. If you want to really make an impact on the college level, this is what you got to train like. This is what you got to do. And so to see something like that taken away, basically due to one man's opinion one man's objective his agenda that's what's kind of sad is that you see just how, how much control he had over something that meant so much to so many people and nothing against baseball I played baseball as a kid um, and really enjoyed it but it was really sad because you know it, it was valued people people looked up to it people knew what was going on I wouldn't say that so much on the it's not like we've had a decreased number of, of kids wrestling. In fact, I was reading an article today where they were talking about should women's wrestling get their own state term in Idaho because it's getting so big. And so I don't think it's affected in that manner, but definitely the effect was felt throughout the state when that was dropped, and it was, it was unfortunate. Well, let's talk about your season this, to this point, 18-5. Uh, and five. Mm -hmm. uh, You know, some... Some big wins in there. Uh, some, I think, a tough weekend in January, maybe where you dropped a couple of the guys that you're gonna you're gonna face uh, this weekend potentially. What's your assessment of, of the season as a whole? Um, I don't think that you can be content till till you're perfect, and, I, and that's something I think that Zeke shares also. Is um, you know, we'll have our after match talks, you know. Zeke's always, you know, good good job on the win, but, you know, we could have done this better, we could have done that better, and there's never contentment. I think that's important. And so that's kind of how I've always viewed myself is, of course, I've never enjoyed losing. Um, and I think that 
So far as the season hasn't been bad. There's been some mistakes and there's been a lot of area for improvement. And that's just the whole that's the whole battle is looking back and saying I messed up here. I need to get better there and just going in and working on it. And that's what this whole season's been about is just um, after my finish last year is coming back and saying where can we improve and what can we do better and getting after it. What are those things? What are what are focal things in your mind right now? Um, I think being at heavyweight takedowns are huge. I mean, you can get heavyweights who can ride, you can get heavyweights who can escape, uh, but you know that's it's not foolproof. You get a takedown at heavyweight, you get a couple, you get two or three takedowns at heavyweight, the match is pretty much over. And so that's kind of been a big focal point. And that's something that we're kind of trying to work on is just being offensive from our feet and getting takedowns. Um, I think that's a major advantage of a heavyweight if you, for a heavyweight if you can do that. Heavyweight might be the best weight in the tournament this weekend. Yeah, I wouldn't argue with that. Uh, what, what do you have to do to win the tournament, in your mind? Uh, takedowns. i got to stick to what I've been doing. Um, you know, it, I've worked hard, and I've, I've, I feel confident. And so it's just basically sticking to, to what we've trained, what we've, what we've learned, what I did last year. So. Thanks so much, Tanner. Appreciate it.